here's Brody Brazil. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you're here, and I'm excited to continue this series, the 2023 A's Player Profiles. This time around, we'll discuss Danny Jimenez, reliever, and maybe even more than that for this upcoming season, maybe closer material. Let's jump into number 56, beginning with the basics. Opening day, he'll be 29 years old. He comes in with one year, 31 days of Major League Service time. And his big league career goes like this. Made his debut in that very expedited 2020 season. He was actually with the Giants. He got uh, returned to the Blue Jays, I think, as part of the Rule 5 situation. Spent 2021 in Toronto's minor league organization, AAA Buffalo. And then he spent 2022 all entirely with the Oakland A's. Did have some injuries, which we will discuss in a second, but he was up for the first time in a first full big league season. In 2022, uh, Baseball Savant, great website, goes into the advanced statistics. It says he only used two pitches, and crazy enough, he used the slider 62% of the time and the fastball only 38% of the time. Usually that would be reversed. Also, usually there would be a couple more pitches in there. I'm here to say that maybe there are a couple different variations of the slider, and the the technology, the the math only saw it as one pitch. I really is he really only using those two pitches? Maybe technically, but realistically, I think there's a couple variations of it. But the slider at 82 and the heater at 94. I think the heater at 94 is the one to me that stands out. But again, he he does use his breaking pitches a lot. I don't need the numbers to remind me of that. Let's go back to 2022 for him. He did go on the injured list two times and for substantial periods. One was between June and July, and the other one ended his season, obviously, September and into the end at October. He ended up leading the A's in the save category. Only 11 saves. Now, the A's only won 60 games. So 11 of the 60 he saved, and he wasn't even in there the entire time, and he really was not the default closer by any means, but I I do think, and I'll get to that in a second, that might be a role that he can take over in the future. The fact that he's already done a little bit of that bodes well. I think you like what you saw. You just want a little bit more of it. His stats on the season, I feel like he he really loves the numbers three and four. 34 games played, 34 appearances, a three and four record, and a three, four, one ERA. That's not a typo. It's just also really easy to remember, but those are good numbers. And the 11 saves in the 34 games played, you realize not all of those are save situations. So he was pretty good. And that's, again, encouraging for him in this career and what he could pan out and hopefully be for the A's. Potentially the closer or a high closing option. Batters against him hit 183. That's pretty good. And he did have 18 walks in 34 and a third innings pitched. So 34 appearances, 34 and a third innings pitch. You can kind of see what his role is, come in for one inning, uh, sometimes shorter. Maybe sometimes he would get into a second inning, not always finish it. But 18 walks, basically a walk almost every other inning he pitched. Probably something to just you know cut down on. We'll, we'll see where 2023 brings him. But he also had an opponent's average of 100, precisely 100 when the hitters were in two strike counts. You love that, right? Get him cornered in and typically yeah the average does get pretty low uh, but to be right at 100 in a two strike count for a major league hitter that he's facing that's pretty good that he if he can get to that count nine times out of ten obviously he's going to get that out Uh, opponents only hit 163 off him with runners in scoring position again if you look at the overall uh, trend and where most batters are it's usually 20 even 30 40 ticks higher than that or more, uh, so 163 for him, for for an opponent's average, for Jimenez with runners in scoring position, I'll take it. That's great. You can kind of sense here what's going on. But gets in good spots, performs well under pressure. If you could just eliminate some of the walks, that'd be fantastic. And there's also this, the day versus night splits. You know, in this series, we've gone through a lot of players that have home and road splits that are like, whoa, what's going on here? Or day and night. This is a very frequent one. Is it, is it Seth Brown's offense? I think it was kind of like this too. Day games versus night games, <laughs> literally like night and day. Hey, maybe that's why that's the saying. Uh, but a 282 ERA during the day, fantastic. 
a 4-5-0 ERA at night. And when you consider there's a lot more night games and day games, look, h- how do you improve this? What's the reasoning for this? I don't know. I'm just pointing it out. But also we'll end on a positive note from last season. Two homers allowed in all of those, what, 34 appearances. So a .52 home run per nine inning ratio for Danny Jimenez. You know, allowing a homer every 18 appearances or so, that's pretty good. So let's spin it forward now to 2023, and I've got nothing but positive things to say. Like, closer material? Yeah, I think he's already shown you that. He just couldn't stay in last season on a continuous basis to to do that job. So staying healthy, like for a lot of players, is the absolute key for Danny Jimenez in 2023. I'd love to see him as... I'd take him right now as the guy to close games, but if not one of the you know, the top choices for Mark Kotze in those ninth inning situations. And yes, obviously, I hope he gets to be in save situations. I hope the team presents a lot more save situations than last year. And last but not least, again, I I got it. It's I'm months removed from watching him pitch. I, I feel like there was just a little bit more than the, the two pitches that are listed there. I, I do know he used a lot of breaking pitches, but maybe a third pitch, maybe a curveball that really sits even 10 miles an hour slower than the slider, you know, something that just offers that difference in velocity. So all of a sudden they're seeing 94, 94, and then 76, 78, 80, whatever. Um, you know, to, to get that difference in velo is what really messes up the hitter's timing. So maybe a third pitch for Danny Jimenez. We'll find out in spring training if, if in fact, that's something he's been working on. But definitely one of the bright spots of the A's bullpen. Um, and, you know, I, I say this about about uh, closers and uh, closer material. I've used that. Like, there's just something about him that, that you feel like when he pitches, and I don't know if it's um, – is it mound presence? Is it uh, pitch selection? Is it like attacking hitters a certain way? There's, it's it's not every reliever that I'm looking at here on the A's and I'm thinking, oh, closer material. It's just not for everybody, but it does seem like it is for Danny Jimenez. So again, hopefully he stays healthy. Maybe he can escalate into that role. I'd be really excited if that is the case. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did while you're here and you're still watching, thumbs up on it. I'd really appreciate that. Just, yeah, go do it right now. And also, if you're not subscribing to this channel, now's the time to do it. I've got lots more A's player profiles, plus other Oakland A's and San Jose Sharks content coming your way soon. So subscribe now, and I'll see you next time.